hi everyone and welcome back to another video of uh, building a full stack clone application in the microservice environment in the last video we talked about architecture now i'm going to do a little bit deep dive in understanding the different type of architecture what to choose what not to choose based on the different use cases okay so if we talk about how system communicates let's say i have a client and i have a server there are many things we need to do we need to consider when we are talking about the client server communication first of all the protocols right let's talk, let's not talk about the patterns so we are going to talk about two things patterns and the protocol right so what is important first of all if you think about two systems because client is also some kind of a device mobile desktop and server is also some kind of a system running somewhere on AWS Azure DigitalOcean Heroku, right? It's a server which is going to respond to the client. So what typically happens in the real world, you log into the mobile app, send a request to the server, some address, some domain, right? Which is available, the server is available somewhere and it is responding to your request. Whenever you open a mobile app, desktop app, web app, right? So that is a server and the communication style and communication protocol first of all communication can happen through different possible ways so based services we were using earlier if i remember 10 years back this used to communicate through the xml and we used to expose visual web service definition language visual document and client can consume and can create a client and can send a request let's say this server is giving you the weather information of any area in the world based on the zip code what you will do is you will create a visual query soap query xml query and you will send to server address it's a rpc based communication style but this is legacy some systems are still using it but we moved on and we started using rest based services right representational state transfer rest based services we start using and what we start using uh, both are using same http protocol right similarly there is a trpc grpc and many other protocols are there right so rest based is again http based protocol like we are still communicating through the http layer you will be sending http get put post here also it's http based because you have a domain you have some web address where you are going to send this web query the soap query similarly trpc grpc right if you talk about the rest based and or the graphql based because it's the same communication style here if you talk about rest based service you will create a simple http client here what you will do you will create a http client and using http client you will just send a request get like let's say xgos fetch or something get post fetch delete these kind of uh, rest calls you can make these are the rest verbs and you will have some endpoints some resource against which you are going to send get put post delete and server is if that is exposing the rest interface the server should be able to respond to you so these are the protocols std based protocols trpc grpc is also popular they are using protobuf right i mean for the faster communications you can use these rest based services when you have a resource and you want it to when you are when you are frequently changing the state let's say user you are updating deleting creating uh, uh, patching or deleting the resource for that you can use rest based services right these are the some of the protocols which you can use but it's not about okay there is a client and then there is a server because now we are living in the microservice world and when it comes to the microservice world there is a big microservices big set of microservices and everything we talk we think everything we think in the microservice terms okay there is no big monolith sitting here and sitting there like there is only one front end one back end one front end one back end we used to do it maybe 10 years earlier but not now even we have a micro front end concept and the microservices in the back end which is already there 
now people also start talking about okay creating the micro front ends i mean i have some expertise on swelled kit some expertise on the next js some expertise on the react my legacy application are on angular js right and i want to build i wanted to these are the different different applications or maybe they are getting rendered on a same domain and they are already being using the subdomains let's say this is maybe x.google.com this is y.google.com and let's say a.google.com these are subdomains and they can all talk to a single backend single monolith or a microservices whatever you want here we can do is i can just put a proxy it can be single nginx proxy and you can talk to your backend layer it depends how the how system you are going to build okay and these are subdomains so they can they can share the cookies with them and you can build the system using this also or micro front end is not about having some domain you can actually render the whole app in a one single root app what i'm talking about is let's say this is my main app this is my main front end app which is let's say hello.com and on different routes you can actually render the different bundles of this application i cannot remove this. let me remove the labels because micro front end concept is also getting popular these days because people have some legacy application and there are some modern tools which makes these things possible so in hello.com on different pages you can render the different bundles so it's all about routing and chunking how we are doing for the front end applications and in back end also i have these microservices right so it's all about scattered business we are not a single team who can disrupt something product is getting taking care of the product microservice and product catalog search is taking care of the search front end micro front end and the search service so in the modern teams where the team size is bigger there you can actually create this kind of segregation and that is very easy even you can you have a flexibility to use the different kind of technology and architecture in that application i can build this in the go python node.js nest.js express but they all need to expose a unified interface so that front end people can understand okay this is rest based interface or a graphql trpc grpc whatever okay so this just i was talking about the the, the way of building a systems here these are the protocols we are using mostly we use rest based style but we started using graphql based also it's still a http post call the only thing here is with the graphql we are sending a query here we are sending a graphql query query and mutation and subscription and this is server is exposing the query and mutation right rest interface get put post verb i will hit against a resource graphql query against a resource i will trigger a query to fetch the data mutation to change the state of a data but still it is on the http layer in the graphql you will hit mostly the post calls to a specified interface specified endpoint here you can define the multiple http get put post patch delete whatever the the resource verb you wanted to use okay now the important part of all these is the patterns because i'm going to talk about these things this is really very big why because the architecture patterns decide you might hear or see thousand different blogs on the architecture pattern but if you really want to get into those come to this page it really talks about all different architecture patterns which you can think of based on the front end based on the services based on the persistence layer based on the communication style based on how you are designing your front end because the architecture is not all about okay how you are designing your services here i have a business logic okay this is my business logic this is my let's say the ui interface this is my gateway 
and let's say this is my persistence layer and then we have a communication style okay there are different services which are talking to each other so these architecture patterns are segregated based on all these things okay front end architecture patterns uh, the data management architecture pattern and deployment architecture pattern many more right how you are i mean if you see if you google out you will see strangler pattern circuit breaker pattern gateway pattern many cqrs pattern but there is no nicely decomposition grouping of those architecture pattern now we are going to do it okay first we talk about application architecture pattern which we already know that it's a sometimes we use monolith legacy world and microservices we will not talk about more on these we everybody knows what is monolith and what is microservice pattern right this is application based architecture pattern in the application style you can choose what pattern you wanted to use you want to write a microservice based uh, application whole application or you wanted to just use a monolith okay now decomposition i will start writing couple of these things here so it will be more clear and uh, let's make these things bigger monolith and microservice this is these are actually the application based architecture okay now i i am good with that okay i can i choose uh, microservices now decomposition of these services let's say i'm writing uber eats clone how would i decompose my services based on subdomain let's say start is has its own domain of doing business the checkout is its own order processing is its own or maybe a services per team this is the business this is how the business will decide services per teams okay there is a checkout team like in ptm i had there is a checkout team there is ordering team there is a different teams for different domain but the product is same how you make the payment how you make the order right the end goal is the old teams are delivering the same product decomposed by subdomain by business capability right this is how you can decompose your services or your systems into different sets right i mean uh, you can use a domain driven design using in subdomains this is a ddd based on that you can divide your services into a different layers okay now coming to the important patterns which we see these days is the data management these are actually the decomposition pattern i mean this is a little bit theoretical but i think everybody needs to be aware because if you try to understand and think about architecture pattern they will throw you 10 20 without even talking about what they are doing because architecture pattern can be of how the service is talking to each other how you are storing the data how you are designing the front end how you are dividing the system based on your service needs based on your teams and business capability okay data management patterns you might have have heard about these things okay i mostly what i do is in my systems in my services i use db for service from the name it's clear what it is doing we may use uh, postgres dynamo neo4j whatever the database but let's say the cart service is using the mongodb so this database has nothing to do with any other service there can be a shared data service also what you are doing is a shared database pattern in that case okay multiple services can share the data instead of uh, talking to the service they can actually query to the database connection and fetch the data okay next is the api composition pattern API composition just uh, implement a query and uh, it compose it actually compose the API data by sourcing the data from the multiple source. Okay, I need to fetch the user data with the profile and accounting. I will look for the multiple sources 
and I will get the data. Okay. Now most popular is the event sourcing pattern. Now you might uh, you might think about what is event sourcing. What we are doing, we are sourcing the events happening in the system. Let's say the banking transactions. You are doing the transactions, uh, credit, 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 and the debit, debit, debit. The ordering of the, the events is really important. The sequence of the events, because if you mix up the sequence of the events, everything will be messed up. Similarly, in the Uber Eats, first user will log in, user will place something in the cart, because I wanted to see what this user has done after logging in. So there can be event sourcing pattern we can utilize to see the activity of the user. User logs in, put the food items in the cart and did more search, put more items and then he, he check out, he did the payment, maybe he cancelled the order. So there is a whole journey of the user that can be tracked only through these kind of pattern and this is all about how we are storing the event. So this is a database pattern. Then there is a CQRS, I will not talk about any other CQRS pattern is another more popular command query responsibility segregation pattern. In complex enterprise patterns where you actually segregating the read and write. Okay, what you are doing is I am not going to read from the place where I am writing. So there is a one system is there which is writing to the database and there is a one system which is reading to the database. There may be a two different data source. Okay, uh, I can talk about CQRS a little bit. CQRS and the event sourcing. I mean, these are very detailed uh, architecture pattern, which sometimes we use it in our day to day life and in the product design. I will try to draw something and let's see how it goes. Okay, uh, because this event sourcing pattern is something which we use uh, at many times. Let's say this is a service, this is the microservice. Okay, and it is generating a lot of events. So, because these events are really important, here it is my database. What I will do is I will try to segregate, I will try to store those events. What those, what what kind of events I can send these all the events which happened in the past order created right order approved order shipped let's say you are building an e-commerce application user logged in order or user check out the order user did the payment user created the order and now order has been shipped so this database right this is the event store let's call it as an event store this can be a service right because it is sourcing all the events, putting the events in the event store. Now, there can be other microservice can look for these events. Okay, let's say I'm doing an order service, right? In the order service, there is an order table in the event store, which is storing order, okay, order created, order approved, and then order saved, right? Now, there may be a service, customer service, which will be looking for all these kind of orders, okay, order shipped, order approved. This is a customer service. And this is order service, which is, play, which is putting all these events, order created, order shipped. Customer is willing to know what happened to my order. Is it successfully shipped? I will get a notification, tracking, all these things. So in the event store, we will have the store tracking and then this event store can act, can react to these events, can publish these events somewhere and this customer microservice can subscribe to those events. Okay, these things are happening. Coming to the CQRS, CQRS is command and query. For understanding CQRS, we need to understand two things, command. Command means you are actually commanding something, you are actually ordering something to the system to do and query you are just requesting a data like there are different terminologies in the architecture event command query so you are actually do sending a command from the ui this let's say this is the user interface from there you are sending a command and here we do have let's say this is the write database and this is the read database
right and this is your ui layer from ui you will send a command to create let's say order this is the right database okay and this is used to maintain the eventual consistency because we are not reading from here we are reading from the read database and both these databases are eventually consistent right database and read database this is just a small logic okay how we segregate the read and write there is a command service which will write to the uh, write db write database and this is how you replicate the write database to the read so you will read from somewhere this is the query service this is the command service okay so there will be a command there are different patterns cqrs patterns are driven in different uh, languages you will have a command handlers which will put the events to the write database and you can also have an event store okay whatever is happening you can store them inside an event store here i have an event store right so whenever you send an event because this these are the commands command happened and through the event you will update the query database and from the user you will read the you will send a query and you will read the data from the read database okay the only thing is how you are doing is you are sending a command doing the right database you can store the you can also use the event sourcing with the cqrs because you wanted to store the events happening and then you can throw an event to update the read database so that user is also updated with whatever is happening okay this is a and you will send a read query to read the data okay so let's come back to our data management patterns which we have done now let's talk about some more transactional patterns and all okay so the important part here is uh, communication style pattern okay i mean testing we can skip transactional we can skip deployment pattern okay so what do you mean by uh, deployment pattern like how we are deploying the application to the different platforms right so here is deployment pattern how we do it okay i'm choosing ec2 so it's like an application service for instance there can be a container you are using ecs or kubernetes so it what it means is service per pod per pod or container it's also a docker container or you can use the lambda or serverless based deployment where you don't need to manage how the system is taking care of your code right because here you use the, the lambda functions and lambda functions are responsible for because this is a managed you are not managing any server it's a serverless and it's a totally event driven when you are sending a request then only that uh, lambda will be invoked and that will lambda will heat up from the cold state and it will respond to your service these are the deployment pattern let's see what else we have it's same container vm currently we don't talk about vms we just deploy it to ec2 because we are using managed services azure ec2 ec2 azure virtual machine or aws ec2 or we can talk about aws ecs which uses a container service and a serverless deployment which we can use using azure lambda function aws lambda function or google uh, lambda functions right uh, close running concerns now important point is communication patterns right we, which we somewhat talked about here also but these communication patterns all are synchronous now let me delete these things we don't need because what we were doing in these systems communication client is talking to the server this is what it is doing all, all time now the communication can happen through different means it's not like okay i'm sending a request and request is being responded by server but these communications can happen through synchronous and asynchronous means right 
all these below mentioned communications are sync. In short, this is called a synchronous communication. I will just highlight this so it should be clear. Now we are talking about communication pattern. There can be another async communication pattern. Right. Synchronous communication means whenever I'm sending a request, I get the reply 200 OK, 200 status OK, or 201, 202, 203, 204. Server is responding right away, or through there is a HTTP timeout within that limit, server is sending a response, otherwise, there is a gateway timeout. Right. So, that is a synchronous communication happening between client and server. I'm sending HTTP get, put, post, delete. All these requests are totally synchronous because get is expecting expecting 200 post is expecting 201 patch and delete is expecting http status code 200 from the server so it's like a server is sitting here exposing the rest graph field grpc trpc whatever the the pattern you are posed from here that is synchronous communication but not always we use this kind of a pattern let's say a system where we don't even need to worry about when the system is responding, when the server is responding the client, right? In that kind of system, we don't need to worry about uh, using these kind of uh, protocols. Then what, the, what we will do is we use these messaging patterns. You can use the R, RPC uh, remote processor invocation that, that is totally asynchronous. You can use the messaging patterns which is asynchronous and that is used for inter-service communication like order service wants to send an event to the card service or user service wants to send an event to the card service. Domain specific protocol will talk only about messaging and RPC. So similarly we have something like messaging patterns. And in the messaging patterns, what do we do? Let's say user is logged in or user has checked check out a particular food item and now doing a payment. So a service, because there are many services who are interested to know when the user has done the payment, because I need to uh, send a notification to the, the vendor service, which will start preparing the food and maybe assign a food delivery guy to this. So that the, in these cases, I will be sending an event once the because I need to there are services which are listening to the events order created. So I can use messaging patterns and there are many protocols EMQB and many technology sets like you can use a Kafka, you can use SQS, you can use SNS or RabbitMQ. All these messaging protocols are there because they are indirectly using these are the tools, but they are using these messaging protocols EMQP and uh, there are many protocols so i'm not able to recall these protocols they use they send a message these are events actually which has happened order has been created now what i need to do there are some set of services which really wants to know if, if order is created then i wanted to do something right in that case we send a message to the broker uh, let's say if i talk about simple technology rabbit mq or something like that like let's say RabbitMQ or if you are using SNS which is PubSub based or SQS or Kafka from Confluent or you can use a Kinesis. I mean there are many different ways to notify you can send an event bridge or notify a target service okay some event has happened in the AWS world you use SNS, SQS, uh, Kinesis, event bridge in the open source world, you can use the RabbitMQ, uh, I think IBM MQs, many messaging queues platforms are there, right? Where you need, sometimes you need to also maintain the retention of the message. If the, serv if the server is down, the receiver is down, then how many, how many hours that message will be retained until it has been successfully delivered to the target system. Otherwise, the, the whole system is broken, right? If I'm sending a message and the receiver is down and nothing happens, then we lost the order tracking of the order which has been placed okay 
So these are the messaging patterns which uses some messaging protocols and there are different tool sets which we can use to do that in the Azure world, AWS world, the names are different but the all are doing the same thing. Service discovery pattern. I will talk about the service discovery, server side discovery pattern because that is uh, more popular if I say and external API pattern we already know the, the API gateway pattern right what happens in API gateway I don't need to recall it because everybody knows we have these set of services microservices are there what I will do is I will put an API gateway and there are many open source API gateway Kong we can use AWS API gateway APZ and all this API gateway is not only just forwarding the request but doing 10 or 1000 different tasks like rate limiting, throttling, validating the, the request, validating the domain. You can even spec specify okay I wanted to block all the requests coming outside this network. Right. So security, it also can do the authorization. Like in the AWS system you can actually attach authorizer here. which can authorize your requests coming to the API gateway and then API gateway can forward this request to wherever you want. It can talk to another API gateway or directly a some REST service deployed to the EC2 instance or the Lambda or in a serverless world. And this is your client which is sending the request to the API gateway, right? So there is a single interface talking to the multiple services. These services can be exposing the REST interface, GraphQL interface, whatever you want it can be simple uh, ec2 simple lambda but in serverless world the api gateway lambda dynamo db are the loving friends you can say back and forth front end a separate api gateway for each kind of a client okay you can say uh, for mobile client you provide a separate gateway because maybe some services may be different for a desktop client for a mobile client web client something like this now Another pattern is a service discovery. Important point is server side discovery. Okay. Because what happens is I will talk about the circuit breaker pattern, but let's talk about simple thing is there is a gateway, and let's say I have these services, and these are services. Let's say these are running on EC2 instance and and these services are up and running, but there may be a broken deployment which is breaking the service there is a service request going here service request going there let's say there are three instances of the same service or maybe a three containers running in the kubernetes which is responding for the order service because i'm getting the millions of orders every day and i can i want to have a multiple instance of order service so that this api can gateway can talk to the order container running inside a Kubernetes and can be a load balancing. Circuit breaker pattern knows if this service is down, the health is not okay, I will stop sending the request to this. Right? Or in that case, what it will happen is this is unhealthy, I will send the request only to these two nodes. Okay? Now on top of this, we can also implement a server discovery, server side discovery pattern. What happens with the server side discovery pattern is maybe I have uh, hundreds and thousands of the microservices. If you talk about the Netflix world and all, they have, if you talk about the Netflix microservice dots in the graph, there are many. This is maybe a checkout or auth, checkout, many services, right? So what do we have is we have a service discovery system here. There is a client request is coming in. Let's say I'm looking for auth service. This service discovery because this is like a service discovery. This knows wherever there is a service is coming up, they need to register. And if service is going down, they need to deregister from this service discovery platform. So this service, this service discovery knows what is the address of order service what is the address of auth service and it knows which service or which container or the which system is up and running if this is down it will deregister so whenever there is a request coming in for the auth service it knows which instance is up and running and it will redirect only to that 
route the queries registry to discover the locations of the active running instances right now we can talk about the security pattern we mostly use uh, for security we like how you use the authenticate and authorize you can use author uh, you can use auth0 which is some auth 2.0 saml based authentication and you can use open id connect all these things are there x because most of the time what happens is this is the client this is server you, if you use auth auth 2.0 protocol let's say auth 0 is a vendor for that you get the token then with the token you can actually access the uh, protected server authorizer server okay observability is all about how you observe the services when you have uh, multiple microservices because maybe they are running in the distributed environment this is like very big platform right here there are multiple microservices are running and they are generating the logs in their own system or you can externalize the log writing to some other platform you, whatever the logs are coming in you are writing like in the cloud watch you can send it to somewhere else and like elastic search and all whatever the stream is coming in you can send it somewhere so you can actually observe the services running exception tracking health check apis you can build all those things ui pattern uh, we can talk about the micro front end and uh, the client side decomposition based on the feature based on the teams based on the technology also so these are different uh, you can say the application architecture patterns architecture patterns which are divided based on the database which are divided based on how you communicate from one service to another service designed based on how you design the front end right so this is really important if you are not clear on some points and aspect please go through this even this diagram talks about all those things in deep uh, let me go back because this diagram if we go and see this this is also talking about the same thing cross-cutting concern security access token pattern communication style messaging pattern and rpi remote processor invocation pattern discovery patterns where you want to discover the the active running services because active running services will do the self registration to the service discovery and whenever the client side is client is coming it will talk to the service discovery service registry okay give me the, the location of the auth service observability is all about how you do the log aggregation of the distributed services or the microservices running in a vpc or you do the audit logging and all database based patterns we have already talked about so all these are really important when you talk about how you build the system but on core when you talk about high level we, i divide all these things into the two, two patterns there are more important is a messaging pattern persisting pattern we we hardly use cqrs and event sourcing there is a specific use case then only we use them but uh, i we use only a single database per service from the database pattern for the messaging styles we mostly use uh, rest or the graphql or for the asynchronous we can use sns or sqs to communicate between two services using messages if you talk about security we use access tokens and what else for the log aggregation we can uh, write the logs to the third party platform okay deployment platform is okay let's see because the only from the serverless and server based it's all about deployment because the same service might be running on a single container or might be running on a lambda for us that is exposing a rest interface either it is a lambda either it is a docker container either it is a uh, pod inside a kubernetes or either it is a ec2 instance or a container inside a ecs it's all about how you deploy you deploy to Kubernetes, EC2, ECS, it's a deployment platform, but it's just a technology. Either you use a serverless or server based. Okay, that's all. Let's uh, start uh, looking into our GitHub from the next video.